In this video, we are going to talk about the artist and the artisan and their production and medium. Our lesson learning outcomes include differentiate an artist from an artisan, enumerate the artist and artisan's mediums and techniques, and define the roles of people engaged in the art world, of course, except or aside from the artist and artisan themselves. Let's start with the first lesson learning outcome, differentiating an artist from an artisan. What does the artist or the artisan do? Well, both artist and artisan are artistic, creative, expressive, imaginative, and both of them create things based on their imagination, experience, feeling, emotion, function, and purpose. But there are specific roles or specific skills that differentiate them from one another. An artist is a person who performs creative arts for viewers' appreciation and enjoyment. The artisan, on the other hand, is a person who creates things by hand, so it entails laborious works. He is a skilled worker or a craftsman. An artist creates something with aesthetic value only and no functional value necessary. But an artisan creates something with aesthetic and functional value. An artist makes output as an expression of the beauty of art itself, while the artisan makes output for specific function other than the expression of beauty. An artist's work is something he wants to or he wants to do and not because it will help him achieve or accomplish something else. So basically an artist's work is an end in itself. But an artisan's work is something that produces a desired result. It means it becomes a means to an end. For example, a cell phone. So a cell phone is having a functional value and it does not end on the cell phone itself, but it is further enhanced or further used for specific function or functional value. An artist is a performer. He could be a creative artist, a singer specifically, a dancer, an actor, and many more. While an artisan is a worker, again, using the hands, more laborious. He could be a weaver, a carpenter, a sewer, a potter, or a landscaper, and many more. Now, for the lesson learning outcome number two, um, enumerating the mediums and techniques of the artist and artisan. Well, when you say medium, this is the means through which the artist or artisan communicates his message, which can be seen, visual, or be heard, auditory. In the technique, it is the way in which an artist or an artisan uses his medium to achieve what he aims. Mediums of visual arts, specifically painting or drawing. Watercolor, uh, it is also called aquarelle, a painting method in which the paints are made of colored pigments suspended in water-based solution. And usually, it gives a warm and rich color tones. And this technique or medium uses the technique called gouache. And gouache is like a watercolor, but with the addition of a white pigment in order to make it opaque. Next is fresco. So commonly, it is a mural painting technique executed upon wet lime plaster, and it produces permanent part of the wall, or it becomes a permanent part of the wall. And it is done by painting a moist plaster surface from colors ground in lime water mixture. Next is tempera. 
It is popularly known as egg tempera because it uh, uses basically glutinous material, which is egg yolk to be specific. And it produces steely lines and crisp edges, detail and rich linear texture. Um, it used colored mineral pigments, which are mixed with egg yolk or egg white and ore. Next is pastel. It is a color drawing medium, which straddles the line between painting and drawing and uses coloring pigments ground in chalk and compound with gum water. We have encaustic. Uh, it has a Greek word meaning to heat or burn in. Thus, heat is used in the entire process and it is naturally strong resonant colors and extremely durable paintings so it will produce such things and of course it will be heated or it's using heated beeswax as a binder oil painting or oil so um it is derived or the oil is derived from drying and it is used as a binder. The common oils used are linseed oil, poppy seed oil, walnut oil, and safflower oil. And you know, oil is flexible and deep color and yeah, expensive. Coloring pigments are mixed with linseed oil. So linseed oil is just among the different types of oils used. Next, we have acrylic. It is denoted by the use of synthetic acrylic resins and suspended in acrylic polymer emulsion and plasticizers, silicone oils, deformers, stabilizers, and metal soaps. It is one of the most versatile mediums and one of the least toxic. So it entails stippling, splattering, dabbing, sponging, Palais knife using and detailing. Mosaic, on the other hand, uses tiny parts to create a whole image or object. And uh, there are different methods, no? the direct method, which is directly putting the tiny parts to the base. And the um, indirect method is creating um, backwards, no, creating the, the artwork backwards like a mirror image. And double direct method, which is attaching the mosaic art tiles to a mesh made from fiberglass. And it is usually a pattern or image is made of small regular or regular pieces of colored stone, glass or ceramic held in place by plaster or mortar and covering a surface. Stained glass um, is a colored glass or used colored glass in making decorative windows and other objects through which the light passes. So it's basically seen in, in church, no church windows. Um, done by taking each piece of glass in the design and wrapping the edges in copper foil, which is then soldered along the length of the glass itself and then we have tapestry uh, it is basically painting in a fabric and it is denoted by the weft being running back and forth across a specific segment of the warp to create a small block of color so in tapestry depending on how the fabric is threaded so if it's loosely threaded and more paints will be used. Let's proceed to the mediums of visual art. Again, in addition to painting or drawing, we have drawing. Um, there is an emphasis on form or shape rather than mass and color as in painting. And it uses techniques such as hatching, cross hatching, tonal sketching, blending, using of accent lines. 
The best star, its appearance is generally of a dark grayish brown with a yellowish cast because the bester is produced or made from boiling the soot of wood, turning it into a brown pigment. And the technique is the paint is applied thinly using the white of the background to reveal the lights. Crayon, uh, it is less messy than most paints and markers, less blunt, typically non-toxic, and available in a wide variety of colors. The technique is that the color pigment bound by wax and is compressed. And then the charcoal, it is an odorless, tasteless, fine black powder or black porous solid consisting of carbon and any remaining ash, a book. And the technique is use a kneaded eraser or blending stamps. And the silver point is another medium which is made with a small fine rod of silver such as jeweler's wire which is inserted into a wooden rod or a silver tip metal stylus with points on both ends. And the technique used is dragging a silver rod or wire across a surface, often prepared with gesso or primer. Printmaking, it is anything printed on a surface that is a direct result from duplicating. And the techniques usually used are wood cutting or wood blocking, engraving, intaglio, making stencil printing and relief making let's proceed to the mediums of visual art specifically sculpture so as you see in the picture they are stone granite marble jade ivory metal uh, which could be aluminum bronze brass copper gold silver could be also lead plaster clay glass or wood Mediums of auditory art, sound or music, let us take note that sound is the medium of music. And, well, it could be produced using string instruments. We have the violin, this is the smallest of the string instruments, and it's the highest pitch. The cello, it's much larger than the violin, has longer, thicker, and heavier strings. So that's the violin. Viola, slightly larger than a violin and has a lower, deeper sound. By the way, that's cello, and that's the violin. And then the double bass, the longest of the string instruments and has the lowest pitch. And that's the viola. Harp, one of the eldest string instruments consisting of a triangular frame formed by a sound box, a pillar and a curved neck, and having strings that are stretched between the sound box and the neck are plucked with fingers. That is the double, the harp. Guitar is a string musical instrument with a long fretted neck, a flat, somewhat vein like body, and a six strings which are plucked. I think this is the most popular. So that's the double bass. Let's go to the wind instruments. So, first is woodwinds and uh, the flute, a musical wind instrument consisting of a tube with a series of finger holes or keys in which the wind is directed against a sharp edge. So the woodwinds, the, the wind is blown into the instrument to produce a sound. That's the flute. A clarinet is a woodwind instrument in the form of a cylindrical tube with a single reed attached to its mouthpiece. Piccolo, a small flute sounding an octave higher than the ordinary flute. Oboe has a slender conical body and a double reed mouthpiece. Bassoon, larger woodwind instrument of low range with a double tube and a curved metal crook to which a double reed is attached. And saxophone, a musical wind instrument consisting of a conical, usually brass tube with keys or valves and mouthpiece with one reed. The brass instruments uh, produces a powerful trumpet, is the first example, produces a powerful penetrating tone 
consisting of a tube commonly curved once uh, or twice around on it and having a cup-shaped mouthpiece at one end and bell at the other. Horn originally formed from the hollow horn of an animal but now usually made of brass or other metals. Trombone consists of a cylindrical metal tube expanding into a bell and bent twice a new shape, usually equipped with a slide. Tuba, the base of the brass choir. Percussion instruments. Chimes consist of a set of slabs of metals which produce musical tones when struck. So in your homes there are chimes in the door. The door. Lock and spill, composed of a set of graduated steel bars mounted in a frame and struck with hammers and used specially in bands. Cymbal, a concave plate of brass or bronze that produces a sharp ringing sound when stuck or struck, played either in pairs by being struck together or simply by being struck by a drum stick. Xylophone, consists of a graduated series of wooden bars, usually sounded by striking with small wooden bars, usually sounded by um, also with small wooden hammers. Kittle drum, a drum consisting of a hollow hemisphere of brass or copper over which is stretched in or a skin, stressed a skin. Different roles in the art world. We'll start with the art agent. He is the one who represents the artist in selling his work, similar to a medical representative who sells medicines. Yeah, to represent the pharmaceutical company or the doctor himself. Art consultant or advisor, he is an expert who advises private individuals or government galleries in order to build and manage a collection of arts over time. An art dealer is a person or a company involved in buying and selling of artworks. Art auctioneer, um, he acts as a referee between art buyers and sellers in an auction sale. An art valuer is an expert in estimating the market value of works of art. Art gallery owner or manager oversees the planning, preparation, and maintenance of exhibits in the gallery they own or manage. An art curator is the one who acquires, collects, and catalogs and ensures the overall care of works of art. An art conservator is an expert in art history in order to understand why and when the artwork was made and uses signs to understand how things were made. Art historian is someone who studies the different types and styles of arts and artists throughout history. Art critic writes reviews of individual artworks or exhibitions for the general public or a more specialized audience. And finally, the event coordinator, also known as event stylist or event specialist, event planner or eventologist. Um, he organizes and styles activities that people want to either hold, participate in, or attend. From as simple as a children's party to presenting a major international conference. And here are the art or yeah, the set of things to remember. These are called the art of producing an event. First, conceptualize an event. It could be a local, national, or international event. What is this event? Is it a concert, a singing competition, or an art exhibit? Develop event objectives. You ask yourself, what is the event for? When shall it be held? Who are coming into the event? Where shall it be held? And why? What is the need of the event? Create a theme of the event. It is the storyline of the event that will revolve around a specific theme. So for example, there is a debut and the debutant would want the theme of our debut event to be 
underworld or undersea adventure. So there's going to be um, mermaids and other sea creatures. It's, you know, the entire backdrop and the entire event hall will be turned into an ocean, an undersea world. Determine event venue or location. It's the place where the event will be held. Is it going to be held in a museum, in a small stage, in a covered court of a barangay, or is it going to be held in a very popular event venue in the country, such as the PICC or the SMX Mall of Asia Convention Center? or the Araneta Coliseum? Well, it depends on you as the organizer. Set a date, so this is our example, so that you will have something to prepare in the, there is enough time for you to prepare. Organize a team, of course, it's a, if it's a very big event, event and you cannot handle it all by yourself, then you need a team. You need people to help you run the event. Create a master plan. So this is very important. This is the blueprint of your event. It includes the script. It includes the, the design of the video and all other things. Establish a budget. This is very important. An event will not be possible without monetary requirement. So there must be. Even if it's a very simple event, there should always be money involved. How much does the event cost? Identify and establish partnership and sponsorships. This could help you as an organizer to maximize your resources. Um, having partners and sponsors will help you um, pay for the requirements of the event, such as the venue, maybe, for example. That's, you know, venue is, I think, the one of the most expensive requirement of an event. And when a venue sponsors their place, then that's a good factor. You can save a lot of money. So again, establishing partnership and sponsorships is a great help. Plan other requirements such as meals, refresh refreshments, etc. if they are needed. Create a communication plan. So the communication plan bears the communication strategies for all the people involved in the event, including the organizers themselves, the partners, the sponsors, the performers, okay, the guests. So everything involved in the event should be communicated properly using a, an effective communication plan. Create an event timeline, so it is very important. This will serve as your guide so that you can perform the pre-event activities, the on-the-event day activities, or during the event day activities, and the post-event activities. Launch pre- and post-event publicity. This is very important, especially if your event is going towards um, generating an income so publicity is very important so launch pre and post event publicity which includes um the help of the media the social media now is very much um effective so you need to you need to jump start your event with this pre um publicity event this is needed most specifically if you have partners and sponsors. If the company is sponsoring, they will usually require publicity for their products or services. So you have to do that. Um, you will do uh, articles or news about the event in exchange of the sponsorship. Press releases, yeah, they are very important. And that's all about the artist and the artisan. The art world is such a wide 
in the huge world. So there are a lot of people engaged other than the artist and the artisan themselves. I hope you learned something from this video. Dagang salamat sa inyong pagpamin.